Hi there, I'm Dr. Matthew Schulman, board certified plastic surgeon. And today I wanna to talk to you about something that gives people some real anxiety when they go into surgery. It surprised me that this was the one thing people were most fearful about in anticipation of their surgery. It's not pain, it's not the recovery, it's not even the risk of infection or, or a complication, it's actually the drain. Yes, the drain. This is a big source of fear and anxiety for people going to surgery. Now, I don't want you to be scared. This is just a little plastic tube. So let's talk about this drain. Let's talk about what it is, how it's put in, how to care for it, how it's removed, and all sorts of other things so that maybe when you're ready for your surgery, you're not gonna be so scared of this little drain. So this is the drain. The drain basically comes in two parts. There's the tube, and then there's a reservoir that collects the fluid that comes out. So a portion of this tube will be inside the body, the fluid comes out, and is collected into this reservoir. There's different size drains, there's longer drains and shorter drains and different size bulbs, but this is the general configuration of your drain. So now that you've seen the drain close up, let's take a closer look at the reservoir or the bulb, because this is the important part. This is the part that collects the fluid that is gonna be taken out of your body. So how does it work? It basically works by suction, but it's not hooked up to a machine or a wall or anything like that. It suctions on its, its own. And the way it does that is you give it a squeeze, you close the top, and this bulb, see how it's collapsed? That means it's actually generating its own suction, which will then take the liquid out of the body and it'll fill up in this bulb. The bulb is really special because it's almost like a measuring cup. If you look closely, there's actually numbers on the side of the bulb so that when there's liquid in here, you can hold it up and you can see 25, 50, 75, 100. That way you can record how much liquid is in that bulb. You're gonna to wanna to keep a good record of how much fluid is in that bulb because we're gonna look at that number to help determine when your drain is ready to be removed. To help you record the output, your doctor will probably give you something like this. This is the drain log that I give to my patients. It just gives you an easy way to record the day, the time, and how much fluid is getting collected in your drain. I give these to my patients, but these are easily found on the internet. Now remember, the whole point of the drain is to collect fluid. So your drain is gonna have something in it that looks like this. This is just colored water for demonstration, but your drain may have something that looks darker than this or lighter than this. The color may change over the course of several days, so don't freak out. It tends to look very red at the beginning, like ketchup or fruit punch, and then over the course of the next several days, my patients will tend to see that this fluid changes to more like iced tea or lemonade, but there's all different colors to the fluid, but the key is that you're collecting fluid. The other important part is to make sure that your drain is actually working, that it's on suction. And remember I showed you the bulb has to be closed and clamped and collapsed for the suction to be working. So look at this bulb. This bulb is round, it's not collapsed. That means there's no suction. So technically, it's not working. So this is what you have to do. So in order to make sure this drain is actually on suction, you want to open this, squeeze, so you get the air out, and then close it again. This may be a screw top, this may just be a plug. Everybody's bulb is a little bit different, but you wanna make sure it's collapsed. And then now you see how it's collapsed. That means that it's suctioning through the tube and will continue to collect liquid. Now this is a functioning drain, but if you see it do something like this, that means that there's probably a leak somewhere and the drain is not working. But remember, it's gonna keep doing this every once in a while. So, so a few times a day or every few hours, if you see the bulb like this, give it a squeeze, put the cap on, and it should stay like this. So now you're doing a great job, you're taking care of your drain, and you're walking around, the drain looks like this. What do you do? You gotta empty it. So remember, the first thing you do is you look at the number, you see how much fluid is in, 
you record the amount of output or fluid that's in your drain so you have a record of it, and then you have to empty it. Emptying it is really easy. You can do it yourself. Let me show you how. So this is how you empty the drain. Remember, record that amount so you know. Then you unscrew the top or unplug it depending on what bulb you have. Hold that bulb over a cup, the toilet, a sink, and you just squeeze. That liquid will come out and when you're done, remember what I showed you, you wanna squeeze the bulb, put the top back on, that way it's a functioning drain again and you have the suction. Now let's take a peek on what that drain really looks like when we're using on a patient. So come on inside my OR, take a look. This is the part of the drain that's under the skin and then it comes out of the skin. The fluid goes through the tube and it's collected in this bulb that I've shown you before. If you look closely, you'll see this black dot. That dot actually tells you where the drain should be coming out of the skin. You wanna keep an eye on that to make sure the drain hasn't been pulled out. This is the bulb. Again, there's a cap. If you open the cap, you can squeeze the bulb. Squeeze it, put the cap back on, and when you see that this bulb has collapsed, it means the suction is working and the drain's good to go. If I release the cap and let that bulb expand and fill with air, you'll see that this is really not working. There's no suction. The bulb also has a nice clip. This clip allows you to hold the drain on your garment, on your clothes. That way the drain's just not hanging on the ground. Now the other thing people tend to freak out about is removing the drain. I promise it looks worse than it is. The drains are designed to just pull out, but don't take my word for it. Let's go look at the actual removal of a drain and you'll see it's really not so bad. So come on. So as you can see, taking care of a drain is really easy. You just wanna make sure that you always have that bulb on suction, which means it's collapsed. You always want to record how much fluid is coming out. And you wanna just take general care of the drain. You make sure it doesn't get caught on a doorknob or fall down because that can pull the drain and actually make the drain slip out a little bit, or at the very least, it can hurt you. The other thing I tell people is just don't freak out. Drains may put out a lot of fluid. It may put out a little bit of fluid. The fluid may be really dark. The fluid may be really light. The fluid may be heavier in the morning and lighter at night. All sorts of things can happen because every person's surgery is different and every person is different. But remember, if you have any question about what the drain output looks like or how much drain output you have or whether or not your drain is working, just call your surgeon. That's what they're there for.